हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चैनल टेक टॉक्स इन दिस वीडियो सीरीज आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ क्विक शॉर्ट फॉर योर रेफरेंस आई एम प्रोवाइडिंग अ शॉर्टकट लिंक इन दिस राइट अप कॉर्नर फॉर ऑल द डिटेल्स ऑल द वीडियो सेशंस ऑफ द क्विक शॉर्ट बिफोर मूविंग टू द कंटेंट आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल टेक टॉक्स and keep the bell ringing in this current video session i am explaining you how to develop the logic of a quick sort and how after developing a logic how to start its implementation so all these things i am going to explain you with respect to quick sort before this you must know the concept of quick sort what do you mean by quick sort why it is called as quick sort how it should get apply on a set of values for your reference the details are already provided after clicking here on i you will get all the details about all these things so i hope all of you are knowing the concept of quick sort and then and then only you will be able to develop the logic as well as you will be able to implement the quick sort so now let's think about how you must be having a question in your mind how to develop a logic and how to implement a quick sort so now to develop a logic and to implement a quick sort we suppose to follow these two steps the first step is to develop a logic and the second step is its algorithm implementation and by using these both the steps after at the end of this video session i am very much sure that all of you will be able to implement the logic of the quick sort and all of you will be implement the algorithm of the quick sort so now let's start with the implementing the quick sort by developing the logic in the previous video sessions only i have already explained two examples where how to think about the quick sort is explained by me in reference with both the videos here i am explaining you the developing the logic for the implementation of quick sort here my pattern will be first of all i'll explain the logic and then how to convert it into the algorithm or in a program that i am going to explain you in the next consecutive slide so our first step is to choose a pivot as i explained previously there are four different ways with which we can choose a pivot from which i am going to use the method where i am going to select i am going to pick the first element of your array as a pivot so keep in mind i have used this method that is choosing a first element as a pivot in a further slides so to choose a pivot what we supposed to do now here you can see that i am having a quick sort function with me where four parameters are there to this function the first parameter is nothing but your array the size is specified over here n is the size of array because we have divide and conquer we are going to apply so here dynamically at the time of execution we are going to change the size of your array so that's why we supposed to pass the second parameter as the n that is size of new sub list the first and last two variables are going to give the boundary to your array so very first thing is to initialize uh, all these variables before that we will require these many variables also in our function so that's why first of all declare them and after that initialize them so p is nothing but pivot and i both the values we are going to initialize to the first that is the left boundary or the lower boundary we can say that and j that we supposed to initialize to the last that is the upper boundary or a route right boundary of your array why we have to use all these things because we are going to move in a forward direction as well as in a reverse direction to apply the quick sort as all of us are knowing as far as different solved examples are concerned in this video series so now our main task is 
to choose a five watt that we have chosen as the first element as here you can see that p that is we have initialized as the first element of your array so that's why uh, let's move forward for the next step in the developing the logic is nothing but starting from the first go in a forward direction till the number is less than five watt we have to implement this step in our implementation so now let's move to the implementation so before before moving to the next part we should have to check whether the list is valid or not that you will be able to check with the help of first is less than last because unless and until first is less than last your list will not be valid and if first is less than last your list is valid and then you can move forward so that's why this is nothing but the end of this your outer uh, if condition and now the main condition what we supposed to check is nothing but i is less than j we have to perform whatever the inner tasks are there that with the help of i is less than j till i is less than j we supposed to perform the first task that i have already given in the previous slide is that moving forward till your value is less than the pi watt so array of i is less than or equal to pi watt and i is not greater than the last or i is not move forward to the last we have to move in a forward so to move forward we have to increment i by 1 now let's move forward for the next step this is the step to move in a reverse direction that is come from the last position we are going to move in a reverse direction what is the condition number should be greater than pi watt so let's implement this task in our program so here the condition is tell your array of j because j is initialized to the last position so j will help us to move in a backward direction i will help us to move us in a forward direction so let's use this j that is array of j is greater than array of pi if this condition is true that is till the numbers are greater than pi watt we have to move in a reverse direction that you can do with the help of decrementing j by 1 for every iteration here you can see that i have used the while loop because this task we have to perform repeatedly till the conditions are true here you can see that i have used the and condition that is till both the conditions are true we have to move in a forward direction and a single condition is there that is if the value that is array of j is greater than array of pi watt you have to decrement j by 1 let's move forward for the next step in our logic so next step is while moving in a forward or a reverse direction if we have not crossed each other then we have to swap the numbers if we have we, if any of the conditions are false here you can see that if either of the condition is false that means what whether the array element is not less than or equal to array of p if this condition is false it will get stop at the same position and uh, other way around if array of j is not greater than array of p it will also stop at that position if both the conditions if we are while moving in a forward direction or while moving in a reverse direction if we have stopped due to um, wrong condition in both the while loops then we what we have to check if i and j have not crossed with each other that is i is less than j in this case we have to swap the elements that are present at the ith and jth position that you will do with the help of this logic so with the help of temporary variable we are swapping the content of array of i and array of j after doing this again we at the at the end of this outer while loop we will move backward again to the while to check whether i is less than j and the same thing that i have explained over here let's move backward if i is less than j again we have to start moving in a forward direction till the number is less than the pi watt so that's why what we have to do let's check the condition and again uh, this outer while condition and if it is true let's check again array of i is less than or equal to array of p and i is less than last that is uh, i we have we have not crossed the upper boundary of our array if this both the conditions are true we have to move forward and after that after moving in a forward direction 
you have to stop somewhere either condition is false you have to stop and then you have to go execution for the go on execution for the next while loop that is moving in a reverse direction till the number is greater than pi watt so again execute this while condition if condition is true you have to move, move in a backward direction that is in a reverse direction again let's check whether uh, i and j have not crossed their position if they have crossed their position we have to move forward so what we have to do by moving forward we have to swap the pi watt the value present at the pi watt and the last number while reversing the list that is wherever the j is stopped that the number present at the jth position and the number present at the pi watt that both we have to swap if i is not less than j if i have crossed the position or they are at the same position in the both cases we have to exit because after moving back to this while loop this condition is also false and it will get exited from the outer while loop uh, at the end of this while loop what we have to do we have to perform the swapping of the elements present at p and j position that is pi watt and j position at where we have stopped the reversing the uh, what we can say moving reverse in a reverse direction at that position we have stopped and after performing the swapping of j and p element you will be having the list which are divided into two that is the left sub list having the all numbers which are less than the pi watt and the right sub list which is have which are having the numbers which are greater than pi watt so that's why we have to apply again the same number of steps initiating to the left sub list first of all and then to the right sub list so that's why this is the first function call to the left sub list how you will identify it is a left sub list because now pi watt has secured a position that will be the jth position jth position will be the number now which after this swapping jth position number will be nothing but the pi watt number and that's why the list is divided that will be the j minus 1 the first will be as it is that is lower boundary will be as it is for the left sub list here you can see that the for the left sub list your left boundary will be as it is and or the lower boundary we can say that will be as it is and the upper boundary is nothing but pi watt the position of pi watt minus 1 that is j minus 1 and this is nothing but the recursive function call to the left sub list and if i want to move forward after execution of this quick sort once for a left sub list then or after ending the left sub list we will move forward in a right sub list for a right sub list for this right sub list here you can see that the upper boundary right boundary will be as it is that is nothing but last but there will be a change in the lower boundary that is nothing but j plus 1 because at the jth position you have already placed the pi watt number and due to that only your list was divided into a left sub list and a right sub list so to call the quick sort again for a right sub list we supposed to update the uh, uh, left boundary that is lower boundary by j plus 1 and after this what you have to do you have to again implement again execute the same steps by choosing the pi watt again and by performing the same task you will be able to implement the algorithm or you will be able to apply the algorithm on a left sub list and then to a right sub list so in this way you will be uh, uh, easily able to implement the quick sort algorithm so in this way we have developed the quick sort algorithm so uh, steps for the quick sort in, at a glance that I am going to explain you once more that is first of all you supposed to choose a pi what then you have to move in a forward direction uh, starting from first till the number is less than pi what and 
after whenever you will stop at uh, while this uh, executing condition you supposed to start from a last and you have to move in a reverse direction till the condition each number should be greater than pi what if either of this condition is uh, if if the if this condition is false you supposed to stop by uh, moving in a reverse direction and you have to check whether you have crossed that while moving in a forward or a reverse direction if we have not crossed with each other then you have to swap the numbers where you have stopped to move in a forward direction and where you have to stop to move in a reverse direction so that's why move backward execute once more that the moving in a forward direction till the condition is true moving in a backward direction till the condition is true when uh, the condition is false you have to stop to move in a forward direction when this condition is false you have to stop to move in a reverse direction if they have crossed their positions that is i is crossing to j or at the same position we supposed to stop and we supposed to swap now the pivot with the last element while reversing the list where, where, wherever you have stopped while reversing the list with that number you have to swap the pivot number why we have to do all these things by moving in a forward direction we are checking that all the numbers must be less than the pivot and while moving in a reverse direction we are checking that all the numbers are greater than the pivot and whenever we are uh, getting both the conditions are false it indicates that this is only the place where the pivot can be put can be inserted can be uh, swap with the last number while moving in a reverse direction and by doing this only you will be able to see that the list is divided into two and that will be having the beauty of this algorithm is by uh, uh, with this algorithm we are placing the pivot at the proper position in at the end of every pass and uh, the mo one more thing one more uh, what we can say the important thing is that the left sub list will be having all the elements which are less than by what and the right sub list will be having all the elements which are greater than by what but now at the end of this pass here you can see that only the first at the end of first pass the first pivot has secured the position what about rest of the elements for that you have to apply the same steps again on a first of all left sub list and then on a right sub list so now let's take a glance of a quick sort algorithm once again so here this is your algorithm the important thing is i have already explained it in detail already in a previous slide so here uh, with the with the help of this algorithm you will be able to implement the quick sort you will be able to sort the set of 10 values in the ascending order so thank you dear friends for listening and watching my video if you like the content and the video you can please put a comment if you are having any query any doubt then also you can put a comment in the comment box i'll try to solve your all the queries here i'm providing you a subscription link for my channel tech talks if you have not subscribed yet please do subscribe my channel and share it with your friends along with this i am providing you a shortcut link for the next video of this video series and the whole video series also i am providing you in the form of playlist thank you stay tuned with tech talks happy learning happy data structuring thank you